So let us start with the question number one of pathology. Again, I start with the last line, a little bit lengthy, three line question. Which of the following is immediate management of this patient? So question is asking immediate management, FFP, inhalational oxygen, antihistaminic, adrenaline, four options have been given to us. Let us see what is the question. 28 year old, so basically fresh frozen plasma, oxygen, antihistaminic, adrenaline. 28 year old blood is transfused blood for the first time. So there is a transfusion for the first time. Is that important? Nothing is important here as of now because uh, the four options given for blood transfusion means FFP will be given for <coughs> DIC, inhalational oxygen will be given for TACO or TRALI and uh, your uh, antihistaminic will be given for allergies and uh, uh, adrenaline will be given for anaphylaxis. So we have to check what is this. So 10 minutes into transfusion, he complains of heaviness in the tongue. This is a keyword given here. Heaviness in the tongue and slurred speech. So both of these are suggestive of angioedema in this. So there is suggestive of angioedema in this patient which might be seen, which is seen in uh, classically in case of your uh, anaphylaxis. Examination shows urticaria which is a type 1 hypersensitivity which is a, a mild type of type 1 basically angioedema etc if it is there that is your anaphylaxis which is a severe form BP is 80 60 that is what is a keyword BP is decreased my diagnosis is anaphylactic shock so it is your anaphylactic shock is a diagnosis and sir will be adrenaline is the treatment of choice for anaphylactic shock <coughs> right Yes, let us look at the next question now, lengthy one and uh, there is an image also given, again the last line, always, first last line, which of the following treatment should be started in her, so question asked is treatment, there is an image given, let us look at the options first, vitamin B12, folic acid, iron A and B. So basically vitamin B12, folate and iron and A and B and the image that has been given, what is image showing you? Very classical image finding, this is your neutrophil and there are hyper segmented neutrophils are seen here. This is your hyper segmented neutrophil, even this is your hyper segmented neutrophil. I am finding multiple lobes, more than 5 lobes here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lobes in this and there are maybe 8 or 9 lobes in the previous one so hyper segmented neutrophil definitely answer is megaloblastic anemia it cannot be iron it cannot be <coughs> it cannot be iron basically so that is ruled out here let us look at the question then okay what is the question a 38 year old lady is doing work from home since onset of pandemic she works for 8 to 10 hours a day eats lots of junk food does not eat fresh fruits and vegetables this is the keyword not eating fresh fruits and vegetables fruits and vegetables are important source of folic acid so i am suspecting a folic acid deficiency in this lady as of now uh, now she has an easy fatigue peripheral blood smear shows is as shown below so basically my diagnosis is a folate deficiency leading to or folic acid deficiency leading to a megaloblastic anemia because peripheral blood smear is showing hyper segmented neutrophil uh, next question given is methyl melanoic acid levels are normal so that means this suggests b12 levels are normal. B12 is not deficient basically because if B12 was deficient then there will be increase in methyl melanoic acid in urine and in blood. So that is not the case. Urinary figlu is increased which is again suggestive of folic acid deficiency only. So basically folic acid deficiency, what is the treatment for folate deficiency? Treatment for folate deficiency is both folic acid plus vitamin B12. That is the correct answer. Option D option d is the correct answer answer a and b that is option d is the <coughs> correct answer here option d is the correct answer here why because if you give only folic acid alone then there will be precipitation of uh, the neurological manifestation that is why you have to give b12 along with folate in such cases right yes next question let us look at the last line again which of the following is the next line of manage management in this so next line of management has been asked so option given are start injectable iron bone marrow aspirate with prussian blue stain esr and crp hplc 
So basically start injectable iron will be for malabsorption, bone marrow aspirate with Prussian blue if you are suspecting a sideroblastic anemia, HPLC if you are suspecting a thalassemia either minor or major or sickle cell or ESR CRP will be if you are suspecting chronic disease inflammation basically. Let us look at the question. Patient presents with easy fatigue which is expected anemia, hemoglobin is 8 grams per deciliter. MCH is 22, MCV is 70, microcytic hypochromic, that is my first uh, approach here, there is a microcytic hypochromic anemia, reticount is 1.4, now, so very important, this is a microcytic hypochromic anemia, serum ferritin is 20 microgram per liter, which is reduced, normal value 50 to 150, we know that, and serum iron is 22 micrograms per deciliter which is also reduced which value is also on 50 to 150 so serum and serum ferritin is reduced diagnosis definitely is your ida iron deficiency anemia is your diagnosis the patient was started off on oral iron after four weeks his hemo her hemoglobin is 7.6 so hemoglobin is not improved from 8 it has become 7.6 and ready count is still same what do you do basically that means the patient is having IDA despite giving oral iron the patient is not responding start this will be a malabsorption that is why start injectable iron so the diagnosis here will be a malabsorption of oral iron start injectable iron when will you do bone marrow aspirate Prussian blue sideroblastic in sideroblastic ferritin and serum iron both will have increased ESR CRP will be done in uh, uh, if you are suspecting chronic inflammation and in that case ferritin should be increased serum and should be low there and thalassemia everything should have been normal and they should have been not such low hemoglobin in thal minor right yes so answer is option A start injectable iron question number four this is a one liner question deficiency of AD AMTS 13 leads to so deficiency of AD AMTS 13 leads to Glanzman thrombasthenia? No, that is not the answer because Glanzman thrombasthenia is due to deficiency of glycoprotein in the pro, uh, glycoprotein one, uh, not one B, sorry, two B three A. Glycoprotein two B three A is Glanzman thrombasthenia. TTP is the correct answer. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura is because of AD AMTS certain deficiency. Option C, ITP is not, it is an autoimmune condition. There are antibodies to the glycoproteins here. Bernard Solier syndrome occurs due to deficiency of glycoprotein 1B9 in on the platelets, right? <clears throat> this is what is, yes, at AD AMTS 13 will lead to uh, uh, red, uh, dist, uh, no lysis of free von Willebrand factor that will be they will be clumping uh, or uh, we can say that there will be a microthrombi formed inside right there will be platelet microthrombi formed next <coughs> question number five uh, two liner you can directly look uh, at the diet question or you can look at the last line a patient presents with left ventricular ejection fraction of 35 percent and was diagnosed of cardiomyopathy so basically lvef is 35 which is reduced basically lvf is low so less than 45 it will be diagnosis of cardiomyopathy so basically they are asking you which cardiomyopathy will cause left ventricular ejection fraction reduction lvef reduces only if there is a systolic dysfunction there should be a systolic dysfunction in the heart then only there will be one this will lead to reduction in LVEF, left ventricular ejection fraction. And reduced systolic function happens with only one condition that is your dilated cardiomyopathy. Dilated cardiomyopathy can lead to dilated cardiomyopathy can lead to reduction in LVEF, systolic function, dysfunction. Both hypertrophic and restrictive cardiomyopathy have diastolic dysfunction because they are having diastolic dysfunction there will be not reduction no reduction in lvef in them lvef would have maintained in them in fact in hypertrophic lvef will be more also uh, or ba basically it will be having more force that is why it will empty out everything so answer in this is a dilated cardiomyopathy and causes hemochromatosis it cannot be both a and c because although hemochromatosis can cause restrictive cardiomyopathy but their lvf will not reduce later on it causes restrictive cardiomyopathy in the initial phase it will always cause one dilated cardiomyopathy right yes next question question number six let us look at question number six a renal biopsy from patient 
shows changes as in the image which of the following is most likely cause for such manifestation so this is a renal biopsy we have been told and what is the most likely manifestation always when image based question is there look at the options then only your thinking becomes proper looking at the image makes you you know go uh, every every place it will land you in many places so that's why look at the option post streptococcal glomerulonephritis malignant hypertension acute pyelonephritis lupus nephritis so typically are we seeing any glomerulonephritis to call glomerulonephritis i should be seeing one glomerulus i don't see glomerulus if i am able to see this is your blood that is there even here also i can see blood inside so there is this red is blood possibly this will be your vessel wall that is there this is a vessel that is there which is containing the blood right yes if this is a renal biopsy and now what am i seeing inside this vessel wall is pink colored material fibrin like material right this is your fibrinoid necrosis that you are seeing in the vessel wall this is a blood vessel and all that pink colored material that you are seeing in the wall this is all fibrinoid necrosis so answer to this question where do you see fibrinoid necrosis now definitely this is not a PSG and because I don't see a glomerulus here and there is no question of glomerulonephritis diagnosis on this. So even it is not even lupus nephritis. So answer to this question is option B malignant hypertension because you are seeing one fibrin like material here fibrinoid necrosis will be seen in malignant hypertension apart from this fibrinoid necrosis can be seen in polyarthritis nodosa can show this pan can show this and even microscopic pan can also be showing your <coughs> fibrinoid necrosis in the kidney or renal vessels basically right yes question number seven let us look one liner again hematological manifestations of sle are which type of hypersensitivity type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 this is a tricky question answer is not type 3 remember most of your systemic manifestation of SLE, most of the systemic manifestation are due to vasculitis. Systemic manifestation are due to vasculitis which is a type 3 hypersensitivity. Like for example, lupus nephritis is a type 3 hypersensitivity because it is happening because of vasculitis in the kidney or even pneumonitis is also a type 3 hypersensitivity. All of them are type 3 except for the hematological manifestation. The key word given was here hematological manifestation. Hematological manifestations are type 2 hypersensitivity. The hematological manifestations include autoimmune hemolytic anemia and ITP which occur in SLE and are type 2 hypersensitivity not type 3 hypersensitivity. So remember this in exam it is a type 2 hypersensitivity hematological manifestations of lupus. Right? Yes. Next question. Which of the following does not manifest with pancytopenia with hepatosplenomegaly? So one liner question does not manifest. So the key word here is which is not showing pancytopenia with hepatosplenomegaly is the question. Right? Pancytopenia with hepatosplenomegaly. Aplastic anemia, chronic myeloid leukemia, hairy cell leukemia, myelofibrosis. Now very important is all of them can show pancytopenia. Whereas in this, so pancytopenia can be seen in all, but in aplastic anemia, this will be pancytopenia will be there, but there will be no hepatosplenomegaly. There is no hepatosplenomegaly happening in aplastic anemia because there is no extramedullary hematopoiesis happening there, right? So answer to this question is option A. <clears throat> does not have hepatosplenomegaly. Pancytopenia without hepatosplenomegaly, DDs are only two you can think of. So what are those two DDs? One is aplastic anemia, another is a myelodysplastic syndrome. These are the only two DDs for pancytopenia with, uh, without hepatosplenomegaly. So this is without hepatosplenomegaly. These are without hepatosplenomegaly, remember. So with hepatosplenomegaly will be many other conditions like all leukemias can be there, myelofibrosis can be with hepatosplenomegaly. 